Greetings my friends, Jimmer Linz here with the Motion Capture for Source Filmmaker tutorial. This is part four, mapping the model. Uh, in parts two and three we recorded a skeletal animation and in part four, this one, we are going to learn how to map that animation to a model in Team Fortress 2 to produce the uh, actions that we recorded. You're going to need some software to do this. Primarily you're going to need copies of Autodesk's Maya and Motion Builder. These are not free, although if you are a student you can get free copies of them. Go check at student.autodesk.com for information about their student licensing program. Please don't abuse their student licensing program. Please don't try and use the free versions of the software they provide to create commercial works or for-profit stuff because that just abuses the license and causes problems for everybody and will cause Autodesk to clamp down even more uh, on those of us who are not doing anything bad with it. So don't try and do anything bad with those licenses. Please don't abuse the program. So moving ahead, once you have Maya, you're going to need only the 32-bit version of Maya and it will have to be Maya 2012 or earlier. Do not use 2013. For Motion Builder, I would suggest using Motion Builder 2012, and it doesn't matter whether it's the 64-bit or 32-bit edition. However, the reason you need 32-bit Maya 2012 is because that is the only one that the Valve Source SDK plugins will work with. The plugins are necessary to import and export DMX files to and from Maya. Uh, in order to get Maya working with the Source SDK plugins, you will need to follow some instructions that you can find on the Valve Developer Wiki. So you'll need to go there, read up on that, get the Source SDK installed, get the plugins configured and running with Maya. So we're going to assume that you've already done all of that, and it is probably going to take a little bit of work to do. But once you do, you can go ahead and fire up Maya, uh, and it will look a little bit like what I've got up on the screen right now. Once you fire it up, we are going to go ahead and open one of the models, and uh, the Valve team was kind enough to give us the, uh, the, the, the models in Maya format from Team Fortress 2, and you can find them in the source SDK uh, folders. In this case, we're going to load medic underscore reference dot MA, and uh, we have a, um, a Maya version of the medic model. And uh, the medic is the one I'm going to use to put the animation that I created on. Now, for this purpose, all we're really going to do is we're going to uh, open the file and we're going to say save the scene as, oh, sorry, we're not going to save it as, we're going to export. So you go file and export all. Now, if you don't have the plugins working, this part will not work. So you're going to want to browse to a folder that you're going to uh, store this in. Uh, and you're going to want to save it as an FBX file, FBX export. You will probably get a warning at the end of it about uh, skins and stuff. Don't worry about that. Move on. And then go ahead and fire up Motion Builder. And in Motion Builder, you're going to open up the FBX file that you just created in Motion Builder. And as you can see, now we have a medic sitting on here. So now in Motion Builder, we can uh, do a few things. But before I can animate this model, I'm actually going to need to do a few things to it. So I'm going to turn on X-Ray so I can see his bones. And remember in the earlier tutorial, I talked about getting models, or excuse me, I talked about a T-pose. Well, what we have to do for this is we have to put the medic in a T-pose so it's possible to uh, lock animations to him. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to select each of his bones. And I'm going to set the, I'm going to choose the rotation tool, and I'm going to set the values as appropriate. For example, negative 180 here, uh, and then zero, and uh, so forth. To, oh, that didn't work. So I think it's going to be, nope, not 90, negative 90. <laughs> oh, it looks a little funny there. So you get the idea, though. What we're trying to do is to get the medic into a T pose, um, and that's going to take a little bit of doing because we're going to have to select each of the bones in his legs, and his spine, and his arms, and um, um, zero them all out. Uh, so again, we'll do this with the legs, and uh, then we'll have to move on to the spine. And I should have done the spine first because if I have to change the spine, it's going to change the orientation of the arms. It can be a little fiddly at times. And uh, just as a Full disclosure, I have very, very little experience with Maya or Motion Builder until I started playing around with this stuff, so uh, there may be better ways to do all of this. I honestly have no idea. A lot of what I've done I've learned by trial and error and just kind of seeing what works. Uh, so, yeah, as you can see, the uh, pelvis joint is not properly rotated. And that, of course, changed all of the orientation of the other bones. And, yeah, so I have to go through and modify all of those. We'll go ahead and fast forward through this part. And uh, we'll, come, we'll pick it back up once I've got the medic completely posed properly in uh, T-form. Okay, that looks pretty good. 
Now in the characterization tool, I'm going to go ahead and click the little starburst that means create new character. And I'm going to go down and I'm going to right click in the care in the fil in the navigator. I'm going to click the character I just created. I'm going to name it medic because well, he's a medic. Now, if you look in the upper right under the characterization tool, you will see that there are a bunch of bones. And now what we're going to do now that our medic is in a T pose, I'm going to map the bones of the medic to uh, the bones in the um, little character there on the right. And this is basically what tells Maya I'm going to uh, how to how to characterize the animation when I import it from um, uh, from Ipisoft. So we'll go ahead and we have to link up each of the bones and for the neck there's only one neck bone in these rigs so or in these skeletons I should say uh, but for the spine there are several of them. There's also shoulder joints which may not be immediately apparent. Uh, so you'll need to go into each shoulder and uh, map the shoulder joints. You don't need to go to the outer shoulder joint at least that's not been my experience. And then you'll want to open the spine view and uh, although there are more spine bones than the model has them it's okay it's intended to work this way. So you just map each subsequent spine bone uh, and there's three of them in addition to the base spine. Uh, so once we have the spine mapped then we'll go and we'll map the pelvis to the hips and the hip bones connected to the leg bone and the, uh, the leg bone is connected to the thigh bone and then we do the feet. Now notice there's two bones in the feet. There's the, uh, the foot bone and then um, I think it's called the toe something or another. Oops, I mismapped that one so I need to map it to the right. There we go. Okay, now uh, I think I need to go in and make another adjustment to the feet. Probably didn't do that right. Ah, yes. As you can see, when I was putting this guy in the T-pose, I forgot to actually orient his feet properly. So I'm going to put the orthographic display on. Uh, and then I'm going to, that way I can see it from the side. And I'm going to grab his foot. And this part doesn't need to be perfect. You just want to get them lined up so they're pretty well flat on the ground. So they look natural when he's standing. So once we've got those pretty well oriented, excuse me. Put it back on uh, producer display, the perspective view. And uh, see, this is where I'm this is where I'm not able to navigate too well because there's still some things that I don't understand about how Maya works. But that's okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and map the uh, the hands. There are no finger tracking. There is no finger tracking in Ipisoft, so I'm not going to bother mapping the finger bones because there's a lot of them. And then I'm going to go ahead and map the uh, the toe bones. Uh, the toe base to the toe bones in the in the model. And now we're done and I have to click the little lock icon it will say character must be in the T pose facing the, the Z axis so I do that and I say yes because I T posed him and then I said I'm going to lock him as a character. Save the FBX file in a location you can remember later because you're going to need to refer back to it at, uh, in the next tutorial. Uh, that's it for this tutorial. In the next one we will show you how to create a mapping template that will allow you to map the bones in the, in the animation exported from Ipisoft uh, to your uh, Team Fortress 2 models. Uh, and you will also be using the model that we just created uh, in the next tutorial. So I will see you then. Thank you for watching this tutorial. I'm Jimmer Linz and uh, I appreciate it. Have a great day.